Yeah, hi, thank you. How's the audio level? I hope it's fine. Um, you were talking about um, uh, basically toolkits and um, various resources that could be used for the um, urban uh, issues that were just raised by our other esteemed colleagues. And I think that my presentation here would come in handy. Hopefully it will get some insight into what has been developed. So I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. As um, explained, my name is Yomaz Burja and I'm by trade and education a storyteller and content creator. And uh, with Utropian, I follow and relay stories uh, focusing on inclusion and urban justice. Um, for the Generative Commons project, which is an H2020 EU funded project, uh, we lead in providing communication and dissemination for the project and the outcome of the project, the outputs of the project. Um, we have six partners in the project and together with the University of Turin, which is a lead partner and six other project partners, we've been studying and analyzing uh, the needs of commons in Europe. And we've been creating tools that could be beneficial for, for initiatives, individuals and municipalities working in and on the regeneration uh, of urban voids, basically, or what we like to call the generative commons, which is a common term nowadays. Um, first, I, I'd like to um, play a video uh, our project leader, Alessandra Quarta from the University of Turin will provide you some context in regards to our project and then I can go on. Okay, I guess that's not going too well, so I'll just continue on. So she basically summarizes the project, but I'm gonna do that right now anyways. Um, but uh, Commons provides municipalities and societies with bottom-up um, community solutions to urban voids. Um, they benefit, they provide a benefit to us and that is that um, they allow us the utilization of locations uh, for the common good. Um, yet launching and sustaining a commons project is a very fragile um, endeavor and uh, it can often be a strenuous path. Uh, and so what we did as the uh, generative commons live in lab is we um, identified key topics on, which needed support uh, in order to be successful and created tools um, that can aid initiatives and provide uh, much needed support. Uh, so the tools that we created, let's begin with the digital tools, are um, three tools here, the toolbox, the map, and the database. And um, I'll basically explain to them to you, but here's a video that's working now, that's good. Welcome to the Jekyll Toolbox, created to provide alternative technology services for urban commons communities and organizations. The toolbox is one of the many unique and diverse tools created as part of Jekyll Living Lab an EU-funded Horizon 2020 project. The pro yeah, so basically, as you can see, the toolbox is a collection of software services that allow communities to take advantage of uh, free-to-use technologies. Um, they're uh, collected and designed to be used by commons organizations, and um, they're free and open source software, and these solutions can help organizations carry out the daily tasks that they currently struggle with. Um, they include a calendar, cloud services, a communication platform, a collaboration platform. And these are just some of the services that are available on, um, on the toolbox that we provide free of use on the website. And uh, you can see the address there. It's at jekyllToolbox.io where you can access it. So please, if you find a need for these solutions, make use of it. It's there for your use. Um, another commas, um, need that commons initiatives have is visibility and networking. And um, the Jekyll map that we've created is an interactive map that lists and details commons initiatives across Europe. Um, it allows not only initiatives, uh, but individuals as well to, to input in initiatives that they feel deserve a place on this map. And um, basically it's open source, so anyone can go in there and add initiatives. So if you have initiatives in your own uh, municipalities that you feel deserve a place on the Jekyll map, please go ahead and input them. And uh, basically this allows exchange between initiatives as well, because you can go there, you can look up all the features of a certain initiative, you can obtain more info about them, and you can even contact them, uh, which is very useful for, for uh, commons organizations. And then finally, there's the database. And the database is a result of extensive, extensive uh, collective research of all of our partners. Um, it carries basically essential information on um, over 200 initiatives, or what we like to call uh, communities of citizens, basically. And um, yeah, it covers 16 countries, over 100 cities uh, from 16 countries. So it is actually quite extensive in its reach. Uh, so we also have a series of new tools that are being released. That's not all. And these ones, basically, what happened is as a result of our research and interaction with communities, um, we narrowed down four crucial needs for commons initiatives. And for these four various crucial needs, we developed toolkits. Um, our challenge is to connect people 
and uh, create a community which can collectively embrace their future, their needs, and get and allow them activity in finding and testing solutions. So the first um, tool that we created, Tada, is the participation toolkit. <laughs> Um, this one was developed by OpenLab Athens, and it aims to increase the visibility of underrepresented groups and improve exchange of information and knowledge via digital games, which they've developed, uh, that promote community building. Um, the Temporary Use Toolkit is another uh, toolkit that was developed. Um, it was developed by Patricia Di Monte, who is our partner in uh, Spain, and um, it allows initiatives to try things out and create visibility while convincing owners that the common good might be beneficial for them as well. Um, the temporary use toolkit is um, through case studies and uh, data analysis aims to support viability and implementation of commons initiatives, basically. And here's some more information on that. I should have moved over to that slide, but that's fine. And um, finally, you know, like finding the right management and decision making model is uh, quite a challenge for people who are often not trained in this field because commons initiatives are bottoms up, bottom up initiatives. The driving forces of um, the initiative to put in substantial effort and amount of energy in starting and getting the initiative going, the beginning phases of the project generally leave them without energy or knowledge or tools to see the project through and to ensure their um, continuity via the community as well as the municipality itself. So um, the governance toolkit, which was developed by Community Land Trust Brussels, which is also another um, a partner of ours in this project, uh, is, to, is uh, basically there to set up and to inspire experimentation and invite, it invites basically local municipalities to reflect on a more generative and plural form of governance. And um, finally, one of the most difficult aspects of commons is in the legal sphere. Um, you know, contracts, negotiations with owners and municipalities can be uh, quite difficult. Initiatives are under the pressure of power asymmetry. And this leads to unfair contracts. It leads to them having to deal with legal issues that they know nothing about. And uh, for that, we created a legal toolkit, uh, which aims to support exactly these issues with examples of contracts, with learning points from cities like Torino, and it's combined basically as a part of the other three toolkits to provide perspective and context. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Those are the three toolkits uh, the, that are coming up or the four toolkits, let's say, as well as the other tools that we've developed. And uh, I'd be very happy to discuss them with you. You can also obtain more information on them at generative-commons.eu and feel free to email me if you have any questions or if you would like to get in touch. I guess that's all. <laughs>